Story versus plot. What the f is the difference? Yo, Darius Britt here, and this is part three of how to write a short film. We're talking about the difference between story and plot. No, they are not the same thing, and yes, you should definitely know the difference. If you were to Google the difference between story and plot, you'd find quite a number of different arguments, and to further complicate things, they all contradict each other. Novelists seem to have their own distinctions. Film school, academia, and textbooks seem to have their own distinctions. WTF, guys, why can't you agree on something? To avoid confusing the pants off anybody, I am going to stick to the explanation that has the most applications and the one that most people subscribe to. So before anybody leaves me a comment saying, My teacher said, I know, I know. So let's get into it. On a very simplistic level, story is what happens, plot is how it happens. Story is more defined as a narrative of events arranged in their time sequence. While plot is also a narrative of events, there is much more emphasis placed on the causality between the events or the cause and effect relationship between the events. It's the domino effect of scenes logically causing other scenes to happen. If the events in your story don't cause other events to happen, then you don't have a plot, you have a series of events. Trust me, it'll make sense. So this guy named E.M. Forrester gave this famous example. The king died and the queen died is an example of a story. The king died and then the queen died of grief is a plot. The plot shows the causality or the cause and effect relationship between the series of events. How about some English? You ever had a friend tell you about a movie? And then this dude gets shot like nine times in the car, right? And then there was this explosion. And then this chick named Valerie who was with him the whole time ends up stabbing dude in the back. What he's describing is the plot. The plot is literally the logical progression of events from beginning to end. Another name for plot is storyline. It may be a bit confusing to some of you because you're thinking, wait, what? When you tell a kid a story, you tell them everything. The whole thing. Beginning, middle, end, the whole thing. That's because we teach kids that story means the entire thing. How confusing would it be to try to teach a child the difference between story and plot? When the cat runs up the tree for the first time, that's plot. How it makes the cat feel about himself. Now that's story. <laughs> that's just cruel. The plot is the action of the story, and by action I mean more than just car chases and explosions. It's the physical journey your character takes. It's the events that take place in the story. It's all about the how things happen. You can think of the plot as the play-by-play -play in detail. When we talk about plot, we're also talking about the structure of the story. The exposition, the inciting incident, the rising action, the climax, yada yada yada. Story, on the other hand, is all about the emotional value of the narrative. The characters and their emotional journey. The meaning of the events that are happening. When someone says that a movie has no story, what they usually mean is it has no emotional value. Nothing touches you, nothing makes you care about what happens to any of the characters. This also includes lack of originality, because when we see stereotypical characters or cliché situations that we've already seen a million times before, we automatically throw up a wall and distance ourselves from caring about what happens next. When someone says that a movie has no plot, what they usually mean is nothing happened. There was a lot of talking, but there was no, there was no action. The characters either literally weren't doing anything or what they were doing seemed extraneous and unimportant to the story. The story, unlike plot, can be boiled down into one or two sentences communicating the general theme or a loose interpretation of the entire story, kind of like a log line. For example, you could say that the movie Determinator is a story about man versus machine or man battling obsolescence against its own creation. You could say Transformers is a story about a boy in his car. You could say E.T. is a story about friendship between a boy and an alien. Some producers and directors have been known to use like a one-line version of the story to tell to cast and crew to make sure that everybody's on the same page and they're all making the same movie. Steven Spielberg told cast and crew on the set of Schindler's List to remember that this is a story about a man who wants to make a difference, not about Nazi concentration camps. Story and plot go hand in hand. You can't really have one without the other. Story gives meaning to plot and plot gives action to story. You can have the best story in the world, but without plot to give it backbone, give it structure, to keep it progressing and moving forward, it'll be a formless pile of mush. It won't go anywhere and it'll bore you to tears. Plot cannot exist without story or it becomes lifeless and dry. If your characters don't have an emotional reaction to a plot 
development, then that event will not have an effect on your audience. If it didn't mean anything to your characters, then why did you bother showing it to us? You could remove it all together and we wouldn't notice because it had no effect anyway. I'll be using the short film The Porcelain Unicorn as an example, and if you haven't seen it, you should check it out right here first and don't go any further because uh, I'm gonna spoil it. So you should definitely watch it before you proceed any further because it's actually good and you should check it out without me spoiling it first. We open up with an old man walking with a cardboard box in his arm. He references a piece of paper for an address. He finds the house he's looking for when he spots a familiar window which sends him into a flashback. Boom! Now we're in Germany, 1943. Three German kids climb through the window and rummage through the seemingly abandoned house. The occupants left in a hurry because there's still bread on the table and an unfinished cigarette in the ashtray. The boys hear a thud in the cabinet and two of them run off scared. Scaredy cats. The last kid decides to investigate and finds a cute little girl in the secret passage. This little girl is kind of an Anne Frank type character. The cute little girl hands the boy a porcelain unicorn. The boy notices the yellow star sewn onto her clothing. Everybody knows what that yellow star is for. So the two become fast friends when this happens. So a little boy urges a little girl to hide, she does, then the boy covers for her and hands the unicorn to the Nazis and earns himself a beatdown. Damn those Nazis. Back to the present, the old dude hesitates to knock on the door and turns away when the door opens. Now we know who that is. That's the cute little girl and she's all grown up now. In the living room, the elder lady opens the box to find a porcelain unicorn. Now if that short didn't make you feel something, then you're the reason why there's evil in the world. Now what we just went through is the plot of Porcelain Unicorn from beginning to end. It's everything that happened. It was the play by play in detail. Now let's talk about the story. There's definitely plenty of emotional value in this narrative. Even though the short is literally only three minutes, we definitely are presented with a well-developed main character. The older man, we've seen him confront his fears for a greater cause twice. Now let's try and boil the story down into one or two sentences. You could say that it's a story about a man trying to reconcile with a survivor for atrocities that were beyond his control. You could say that it's a story about the inherent goodness in the human condition despite the the fact that we can be absolute monsters sometimes. You could even say that it's a story about how events in our youth can shape our adult lives. Now that you understand the difference between the two, how can we use this knowledge to our advantage? Hmm. Well, if you've written your story and you've got great characters and a good narrative, but you notice that things just seem to drag on, then you need to add more plot, more action. If you've written your script and you've got tons of action with a great pace, but you notice that your audience just doesn't seem to care about your characters or what happens to them, then you need to slow things down and add more story more emotional value, more meaning. It's a balancing act. If you got too much of one thing, then you add a little bit of the other and vice versa. At the end of the day, we're all trying to tell compelling stories and if your audience is not interested in what happens, which is your story, then they're not gonna care about how it happens, which is your plot. It doesn't matter how twisty or turny or clever your plot is. Well, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, oh, subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, oh, Twitter. Deeper out.